Hello, welcome to my channel, The Audiobook Journal. Today, I'm going to read the part 2 of book, Youth, Arise, Awake and Know Your Strength by Swami Srikanth Nanda. What we want is muscles of iron and nerves of steel. We have wept long enough, no more weeping. But stand on your own feet and be men. It is a man-making religion that we want. It is a man-making theories that we want. It is a man making education all around that we want. And here is the test of truth. Anything that makes you weak physically, intellectually and spiritually, reject as poison. There is no life in it. It cannot be true. Truth is strengthening. Truth is purity. Truth is all knowledge. Swami Vivekananda Introduction He is an atheist who does not believe in himself. The old religion said that he was an atheist who did not believe in God. The new religion says that he is an atheist who does not believe in himself. Swami Vivekananda Blaming others for anything and everything has become a chronic disease with us. Why should we expect someone to come and help us? To depend on others is slavery. No good comes of blaming fate karma or circumstances. Only a man of confidence can convert challenge into an opportunity. Confidence is not a gift of God. It has to be cultivated with self-effort and diligence. Success stories of great people reveal the truth that in spite of their tremendous confidence, they were not always successful. But the only difference between ordinary people and great ones is this. Great people never consider defeats and failures as obstacles. On the contrary, they turn them into stepping stones to success. Whereas ordinary people get discouraged and stop moving further. Great people are fully aware of power within themselves, capable of overcoming huge obstacles and continuing their march till they reach their desired goal. Full never begins a work for the fear of failure. The mediocre gives up in the middle, frustrated by obstructions. But the man of confidence never gives up, in spite of failures till the goal is reached, says the poet. Second, self-confidence versus ego. There is a very thin line dividing confidence and ego. Most of the time, we get confused and fail to decide whether we are on the right track or our ego is dominating in the guise of confidence. When ego dominates, every success turns into failure. One has to be very careful about it. How to distinguish between confidence and the ego? Here are some points to clarify this doubt. A. A man of confidence says that he can do the work and others can also do it. Whereas, a man of ego says that he alone can do it and nobody else can. B. A man of confidence always tries to encourage and help others in building their confidence. Whereas, a man of ego tries to curb and discourage others when they try to come up in life. C. A man of confidence always attracts people. Even the weak feel confident and elevated in his presence and get inspiration in his company. Whereas an egoist person creates repulsion in the minds of people who try to avoid him because of his boastful nature. D. A man of confidence appreciates the success of others and shares his happiness with them. Whereas a man of ego discourages and humiliates others and feels jealous of the success of others. E. There is joy in working with people of confidence because they are always cheerful and can mix freely with everybody. In the presence of egoist person, even the men of confidence feel an inferiority complex. They feel nervous to work with them. F. A man of confidence always commands love and respect, whereas a man of ego always demands and expects love and respect. G. Confident people are always successful in every field of life because they can conquer the heart of all by putting their faith and confidence in others and receive all help and cooperation from colleagues and friends. A man of ego always suffers setback and failures, losing men and power because of their arrogant approach which adds only to their worries and tension. H. In one word, 
a man of self confidence puts his faith in the innermost divine self the source of all power and energy and also feels the presence of the divine in everyone while dealing with them whereas the egocentric person puts his faith only in his mental and intellectual abilities and skills forgetting the divine which operates through the mind and intellect out of ignorance he applies the same standard while dealing with others he is only aware of weaknesses and drawbacks and never realizes that the perfect divine is hidden behind these superficial appearances which can be awakened by constant training and positive approach third self confidence versus overconfidence there are two types of people realistic and idealistic both are needed for betterment of society idealistic people need to develop a little practical wisdom to execute their ideas according to changing circumstances and should be a little liberal to accept slight modifications and adjustment in the practical field to work out their plans successfully but if they stick to the ideology without realizing practical difficulties if they never try to listen to the people of their practical experience and working skills and are unwilling to accept any advice from anybody they can be called overconfident people for example he who has never got into a plane trying to occupy the seat of the pilot or one who has never held a gun is ready to go to the battlefield or a person terribly afraid of water trying to cross the ocean by swimming what happened to the great warrior abhimanyu though courageous heroic and bold but a little overconfident he knew how to enter into labyrinth but he did not know how to come out of it he thought that somehow he would be able to manage his overconfidence cost him his life duryodhana also committed the same mistake he knew the strength of pandavas whom shri krishna himself was protecting overconfident duryodhana underestimated the strength of his opponent and lost everything again there are people with tremendous capacity to perform wonders but who are not aware of their own strength they always undermine their ability and try to avoid task all they need is a little motivation reminder and inspiration they will do wonders the moment you awaken that giant within them they will do wonders mahavir hanuman had all powers and strength within him to cross the ocean but he was not aware of that when jambavan reminded him of his strength his confidence was awakened and he reached silon jumping across the ocean in search of mother sita mahatma gandhi in his book my experiment with truth tells us how his teacher was an instrument for his learning sanskrit when he had lost all confidence in himself he writes sanskrit however proved a harder task in geometry there was nothing to memorize whereas in sanskrit i thought everything had to be learned by heart the boys used to talk among themselves that persian was very easy the easiness tempted me and one day i sat in the persian class the sanskrit teacher was grieved he called me to his side and said i want to teach you students sanskrit to the best of my ability if you have any difficulty why not come to me as you proceed further you will find in it things of absorbing interest you should not lose heart come sit again in the sanskrit class today i cannot but think with gratitude of sri krishna sankar pandya if i had not acquired the little sanskrit that i learned then i would have found it difficult to take any interest in our sacred books how a little motivation and kind words of his teacher could instill confidence in the heart of mohan das in spite of hard work and sound preparation why are some students not able to succeed in examination lack of self confidence the moment they enter the examination hall the demon of fear robs them of self confidence and makes them commit mistakes all these things happen due to fear of examination what to do in such a situation make your mind calm and tranquil give positive suggestions to your mind such as the question paper is very easy i know all the answers very well 
I am not going to make even a single mistake. I am sure that I will get a very good rank this time. Then pray to God for two minutes to help you in concentrating your mind on the answers. Read all the questions carefully and understand properly with full confidence. Start writing your answers and you will succeed. Same method can be applied before commencing any task if you feel nervous and diffident. Even Swami Vivekanand, renowned as an orator, felt nervous before he addressed a gathering of about 7,000 distinguished, critical and highly intellectual audience during the Chicago Parliament of Releases in 1893. In his own words, Of course, my heart was fluttering and my tongue nearly dried up. I was so nervous and could not venture to speak in the morning. I bowed down to Devi Saraswati and stepped up and made a short speech. He addressed the audience as Sisters and Brothers of America. It was only a short speech but created such an impact in the minds of people. The whole parliament was caught up in a great wave of enthusiasm. How to build self-confidence What makes you weep, my friend? In you is all power. Summon up your all-powerful nature, O mighty one, and this whole universe will lie at your feet. It is the self alone that predominates and not matter, Swami Vivekananda. Though the potential strength is hidden within us, we are not able to utilize it. Right attitude positive thinking and firm faith alone can help us to manifest this hidden strength within. How do great people achieve success in life? They cultivate certain qualities in order to awaken hidden confidence within themselves. Why not we also give a try if we wish to be great and successful in life? First, conviction. The very first step in climbing the ladder of self-confidence is firm conviction about one's own ability. People are afraid of accepting challenges and responsibilities because they doubt their capacity to perform well. They underestimate themselves and lose wonderful opportunities in life. Such doubting Thomases will never be able to say with confidence that they can do anything and everything. So never doubt your inner strength. You may not be aware at present, but believe that infinite power is lost within you and you will come out with all its glory when you sincerely call upon it by the way of positive attitude. Swami Vivekananda said, never mind failures. They are quite natural. They are the beauty of life, these failures. What would life be without them? I never heard a cow tell a lie, but it is only a cow, never a man. So never mind these failures, these little black slidings, hold on to the ideal a thousand times. And if you fail a thousand times, make the attempt once more. How true it is, Thomas Alva Edison, one of the greatest scientists, Thomas Alva Edison, one of the greatest scientists who made a series of inventions, had great conviction in his capacity. He had made over 1000 experiments before he succeeded in inventing electric bulb. Though he was born in a poor American family and was dull in his study, nothing could obstruct his path or prevent him from great achievement because of his firm faith in his inner strength. Great convictions are the mothers of great deeds. Swami Vivekananda Second, hard work. Nothing great come unless we work for it. Dreams can never become a reality without hard work. Fortune approaches him who is industrious. It is the weak-minded who says fate gives. No acts are done by mere desires. They are done only by diligence. The deer does not enter the mouth of a sleeping lion. Men obtain the desired fruit by personal effort while those wanting in manliness speak of destiny only. Neither the lazy nor those who depend solely on destiny fulfill their objective. Therefore, one should persist in self-effort by all means. These are the words of scriptures. 
Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration, says Thomas Alva Edison. There are many stories of success. Among them was a world-renowned speaker, Demosthenes. How could he achieve that? He had a strong desire to become a powerful speaker. This was not an easy task for him. He had a stammer. Added to that, he was not able to speak long sentences at a stretch due to stage fear, feeble voice and many such difficulties. But he could succeed only through hard work. As per doctor's advice, he placed beads of flint on his tongue and tried to utter words clearly and loudly. He would stand before the sea and deliver speeches in loud voice. He spent almost 15 hours a day studying books of various interests and become a reservoir of knowledge. To perfect his manners and gestures, he would stand before a life-size mirror and deliver his speeches, boltening the room from inside. Hard work and sincere effort ultimately resulted in success and he became a powerful and effective public speaker. Let us have a high dream and hard work to manifest that hidden power within. By constant effort, success is bound to come. To succeed, you must have tremendous perseverance, tremendous will. I will drink the ocean, says the perseverance soul. At my will, mountains will crumble up. Have that short of energy, that short of will, hard work, you will reach the goal. Swami Vivekanand. Third, willpower. We are experts in taking woes and breaking them within no time. It is easy to take woes but difficult to keep them up. We need the will of Bhisma who took a lifelong celibacy and practice it diligently. Weak minds always search of excuses. The mind is fickle and restless by nature, always ready to compromise and facilitate. Those who possess a strong will and are determined to achieve great things never listen to their minds. They are masters of their minds. They make their minds work for them to achieve higher things in life. King Viswamitra was arrogant and created problems for sage Vasistra. But when he was humiliated by Vasistra, realizing the strength of spiritual knowledge, he decided to become Brahmarshi. He was caught in the web of lust when Menka tempted into indulgence. He had to overcome all the impediments such as anger, hatred, jealousy, pride, envy, delusion for the attainment of that state. He could succeed because of his tremendous willpower. He was never disheartened by failure. His determination and willpower helped him to awaken confidence which in turn led him to success. You must not say that you are weak. How do you know what possibilities lies behind that degradation on that surface? You know but little of that which is within you. For behind you is the ocean of infinite power and blessedness. Swami Vivekananda Fourth, Self-Respect it is a well-known fact that men of hard work, knowledge, wisdom and perfection are always honored and respected everywhere. Whereas the ignorant, inefficient, lazy and dull people always face humiliation and insult. There are people who, in spite of being humiliated, insulted, warned several times, issued memos, called it scolded for their blunders and even punished, never try to improve themselves. They are people with a thick skin. They suffer from all kinds of physical and mental torture but don't want to change their attitude due to lack of self-confidence. But sensitive people consider humiliation worse than death and always try to improve in order to protect their honor and self-respect. Love for dignity and honor helps them to manifest hidden confidence within themselves and they rise to the occasion and prove their mettle by accepting challenges in life. The great poet Kalidas was an illiterate and dullard. Some pundits who had been defeated in argument by a highly intelligent princess with Dyotma got her married to, to Kalidas in a deceitful manner out of jealousy. When the truth came out, 
she felt greatly disturbed and admonished kalidas for his ignorance his honor was at stake he felt deeply hurt and humiliated he took it as a challenge and decided to become a learned man this feeling of self respect ignited his confidence he left home and returned after he had become a man of profound learning number 5 long preparation it's not enough to manage things but it is important to manage them well great things happen not out of magic or miracle but out of systematic preparation those who do not prepare well and try to manage things haphazardly always meet with embarrassment and utter failure most of the time keep on thinking about goals but do not pay attention to the minute details which will help them to achieve it we all know that 11th september 1893 vivekananda became a world famous figure when he addressed the parliament of religions in chicago but we forget that the success did not come even to a great swamiji overnight preparation started from the day he came into contact with his master sri krishna at the age of 17 sri ram krishna knew his disciple narendra natha was going to become a world teacher and he molded his life accordingly training of the guru first hand knowledge during his wandering day deep study of scriptures and different branches of knowledge his love and compassion for entire mankind spiritual discipline and realization of ultimate reality were the factors behind his success without proper preparation no man can be confident of success pay as much as attention to means as to the end swami vivekanand number 6 communication many have achieved success only through the power of perfect communication there are people who can be compared with a huge reservoir of knowledge and information but not always effective and inspiring due to lack of communicative ability if you can speak even a few words with confidence that will impress people by your effective communication it will boost your confidence many people talk some are able to express only a few can convey their ideas in an effective manner conquering people through arguments may give you confidence but this will never lead to success convincing people through loving affectionate polite pleasing voice not only gives you confidence but leads to success convincing people through loving affectionate polite and pleasing language not only gives you confidence but leads you to success mahabir hanuman was sent by sugriva as a spy to inquire into the purpose of sri rama's entry to his territory during the very first meeting mahabir could conquer the heart of sri ram by his sweet soothing pleasant and polite language sri rama was all praised for his skills of communication many lose confidence and feel nervous and depressed because of their poor expression sardar vallabhbhai patel the first home minister of independent india had a herculean task before him at that time india was divided into 554 states ruled by different kings and nawabs divide and rule was the policy of the british government patel was against it and wanted to unite india to convince 554 kings and to make them surrender was not an easy task he was confident of his ability to convince them about the great cause he could successfully accomplish he could successfully accomplish that because of his effective communication except one or two all were convinced about his views and surrendered the state to make india a united power it is only a few that understand the language of the brain but everyone understands the language that comes from the heart swami vivekanand number 7 commitment commitment and confidence always go together the moment we forget our commitment to a particular cause we lose the faith in ourselves and try to justify our weaknesses how many people remember that they are the citizen of free india and are committed to serve the cause of the nation 
Very few indeed. You can count them on the tips of your fingers. Mahatma Gandhi could have settled down in South Africa, but his commitment to his country forced him to return. Though the people did not believe him in the beginning, he was confident that he could win freedom for India through the power of non-violence. Even when he was a student and wanted to go to London for studies, Mother Putli Bai was not wholeheartedly willing to send him there. Feeling that Mohandas may not be able to resist temptation in a foreign land and spoil his life, she wanted him to promise that he would never touch wine, meat, and consequently associate with women during his stay there. Without a moment's hesitation, Mohandas agreed to her conditions. It was not an easy task for him. Many times temptations came, but his commitment to his mother saved him from all dangers and gave him. Tremendous confidence to overcome all difficulties in his path. Let the sages blame or let them praise. Let the goddess of fortune come or let her go wherever she likes. Let death come today or let it come in hundreds of years. He ended is the steady man who does not move one inch from the way of truth. Number eight, discrimination. Sometimes even the so-called learned scholars lose confidence when they fail to discriminate between real and the unreal, the right and the wrong, the vice and the virtue, due to lack of discrimination. Knowledge alone can make us free from all types of fear. Fear is the greatest enemy of man. People tell lies when they are afraid of punishment. A little sickness make them depressed due to fear of death. They try to run away from the problems of life when they are afraid of failure. Arjuna, a great warrior, the hero of Mahabharata war, went to the battlefield with the intention to fight. But at the crucial moment, he was overpowered by grief and fear and lost confidence. Sat down, throwing away his bow, depressed and despair. Despondent and refused to fight. Though he was a man of knowledge, got totally confused. Sri Krishna restored that knowledge again and made it clear that the soul is immortal and eternal, whereas the body is mortal and ephemeral. There is no birth or death for the soul. Therefore, there was no need for him to be despondent. Ignorance of his real nature was the cause of his depression. When Sri Krishna dispelled it in a trice by granting him self-confidence, he got back his lost confidence and became victorious. The earth is enjoyed by heroes. This is the unfailing truth. Be a hero. Always say, "I have no fear." Tell this to everybody. Have no fear. Fear is death. Fear is sin. Fear is hell. Fear is unrighteousness. Fear is wrong life. All the negative thoughts and ideas that are in the world are proceeded from the evil spirit of fear. Swami Vivekananda. Number nine. Definite goal. Many youngsters are not very clear about their goal in life. You cannot begin your journey unless you are clear about your destination. You cannot proceed even a step unless you decide where you want to go. A clear-cut goal and a one-pointed concentration alone help us to manifest tremendous confidence. We want to do many things simultaneously. Without singular devotion to the ideal, no great things can be achieved. Kalpana Chawla, born in a small town in Haryana, became the first Indian woman to travel in space only because she has fixed her goal when she was a mere child. Her biographer writes, Kalpana would lie on her back and look at the glittering stars in the skies during summer nights. Presumably, this was what ignited her dream to journey into space. She set her goal and never deviated from it. Though her advisor, parents, and even the college principal tried to dissuade her from her choice of aeronautical engineering and suggested to her that she should go for more popular fields like mechanical or electrical engineering. But young Kalpana refused to be convinced and finally achieved her goal, overcoming all the obstacles in her way. Her one-pointed devotion to goal gave her the required confidence to succeed in life. Take up one idea. Make that one idea your life. Think of it.
Dream of it. Live on that idea. Let the brain, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of that idea. And just leave every other idea alone. This is the way to success. Swami Vivekanand. Number 10. Love. Love is that magic word which works like tonic to manifest instant confidence even in a moment. Love makes impossible things possible. Abraham Lincoln, the greatest president of the United States, got that confidence and courage to fight for the abolition of slavery through love. It was his unselfish love for mankind which promoted him to act. His loving heart could not witness the suffering of human beings who were treated worse than animals. A young Irish woman, Miss Margaret Noble, inspired by the speeches of Swami Vivekanand in London, decided to come to India and help Swamiji in his mission of upliftment of Indian women. What was the force which made her renounce everything and follow Vivekanand to India? It was her love for India. Swami Vivekanand could instill that love in her heart. This love in her heart for the masses and the women of India gave her great confidence to overcome all the obstacles in her way. She served India by starting a school for girls in Kolkata and also took active part in India's freedom movement. Love opens the most impossible gates. Love is the gate, all secret of the universe. Every step that has been really gained in the world has been gained by love. Swami Vivekananda Number 11. Concentration God has given us a unique instrument called the mind to all the living beings including animals. But he bestowed this special grace only on human beings in the form of freedom. Animals are controlled by nature. Human beings are capable of conquering nature. This Conquest is possible only through the power of concentration. Swami Vivekanand said, Herein is the difference between man and animals. Man has the greater power of concentration. The difference in their power of concentration also constitutes the difference between man and man. Compare the lowest with the highest man. The difference is in the degree of concentration. This is the only difference. Concentration leads to perfection, perfection leads to confidence, confidence leads to success and success finally leads to happiness. The concentrated mind is like a perfect instrument for achieving success in every walks of life. Creativity, talent, originality, scientific discoveries and inventions, fine arts and even spiritual truths discovered by the sages are the product of a concentrated mind. Especially for students and youth, concentration is must. It is impossible to acquire knowledge and working skills without adequate concentration. Restless mind leads to confusion, frustration, failures and various disasters. How could Swami Vivekanand claim the pinnacle of success through the power of concentration? In his own words, just two or three days before the entrance exam, I found that I hardly knew anything of geometry. So I began to study the subject, keeping awake the whole night and in 24 hours I mastered the four books on geometry. Because of his power of concentration, Swami Vivekanand could master many subjects in Cyclopedia of Knowledge. Professor Wright of Harvard University was so deeply impressed by his erudite scholarship that he insisted that Swamiji should represent Hinduism at the Parliament of Religions, Chicago. On hearing from Swami that he was denied that opportunity since he could not produce the required credentials, the professor himself introduced Vivekanand to the organizing committee in glowing words. Here is a man who is more learned than all our learned professors put together. Asking him for credentials is asking the sun to state its right to shine. Concentration gave Narendranath knowledge. Knowledge gave him confidence, finally leading to success and made him the world conqueror. Swami Vivekanand. Concentration is the essence of all knowledge. Nothing can be done without it. 90% of thought force is wasted by the ordinary human being and therefore he is constantly committing blunders. 
द ट्रेंड माइंड और मैन नेवर मेक्स अ मिस्टेक स्वामी विवेकानंद नंबर ट्वेल्व स्ट्रेंथ लाइफ इज नॉट ऑलवेज स्मूथ लाइक अ बेड ऑफ रोजेस हैप्पीनेस एंड मिजरी आर टू साइड्स ऑफ द सेम कॉइन वन नीड्स टू डेवलप मेंटल स्ट्रेंथ टू डाइजेस्ट दैम many a time a weak mind that is unable to withstand suffering invites only untold miseries what happened to dronacharya when he heard the news of his son aswathama's death he lost confidence on account of grief and finally he lost his life anger grief hatred jealousy ego fear inferiority complex are the obstacles which makes a person weak and bereft of confidence but there are people who maintain equanimity even in the midst of crisis when sardar patel was arguing his case in court he received a telegram carrying the news of his wife's death he was not perturbed by this and continued to argue till the end of the day he won the case in the favor of his client and then broke the news of his wife's death this is the sign of a healthy man Such people never lose their self confidence even in the midst of a crisis. Nowadays it has become a fashion to commit suicide. People think that they can solve their problems. Those who commit suicide or try to commit suicide are cowards, weak minded. By committing suicide they think they can solve their problems. Those who commit suicide are cowards, weak minded. They do not have confidence to face challenges or try to escape by choosing suicide. Is anyone free from problems in the world? Without struggle there is no meaning for life. We have come to this world only to conquer difficulties. Today our youth are becoming so sensitive that for pity things they feel depressed and commit suicide. Success and failures are inevitable in life. Such a rare human birth is not meant for committing suicide. We have no right to destroy this body. It is a precious gift of God given to us to make the best use of it to achieve great things. Failures in examination, a little scolding from parents, a petty quarrel with friends, a temporary financial problem, failures in love affairs, inferiority complex, unemployment, dowry harassment, these are the common reasons which force people to commit suicide. It is a great sin to commit suicide. It is not less terrible than committing murder. We are not the owner of this body we are only the keeper therefore we have no right to destroy it for every problem there is a solution we need only a little patience and confidence let us develop mental strength and courage to face problems of life they will disappear in no time all the powers in the universe are already ours It is we who have put our hands before our eyes and cry that it is dark. No doubt there is no darkness around us. Take the hands away and there is light which was from the beginning. Darkness never existed, weakness never existed. We who are fools cry that we are impure. Thus Vedanta not only insists that ideal is practical, that this reality is our own nature. Everything else that you see is false and true as soon as you say i am a little mortal being you are saying something which is not true you are saying the lie to yourself you are hypnotizing yourself into something vile and weak and wrenched swami vivekanand shraddha or self confidence in the words of swami vivekanand those of you who have studied that most beautiful of all upanishads the katha will remember how the king was going to make a great sacrifice and instead of giving away things that were of any worth he was giving away cows and horses that were not of any use and the book says that at that time shraddha entered into the heart of his son nachiketa i would not translate this word shraddha to you it would be a mistake it is a wonderful word to understand and much depends on it we will see how it works for immediately we find nachiketla telling himself i am superior to many i am inferior to a few but now where i am the last i can also do something and this boldness increased and the boy wanted to solve the problems which was in his mind the problem of death 
the solution could only be got by going to the house of death and the boy went there he was brave nachiketa waiting at the house of death for 3 days and you know how he obtained what he desired what he wanted is this radha unfortunately it has nearly vanished from india and this is why we are in our present state what makes the difference between one man and another is the difference in this radha and nothing else what makes one man great and another weak is low is this radha our master used to say he who thinks himself weak will become weak this is true this radha must enter into you whatever material power you see manifested by western races is the outcome of their shraddha because they believe in their muscles and if you believe in your spirit how much more will it work believe in that infinite soul the infinite power with consensus of opinion your books sages preach that atman which nothing can destroy in it is infinite power only waiting to be called out for there is the great difference between all others philosophies and the indian philosophy itself whether dualistic qualified or monistic they all firmly believe that everything is in the soul itself it has only to come out and manifest itself therefore this shraddha is what i want and all of us here want this faith in ourselves before you is the great task to get that faith give up the awful disease that is creeping into our national blood idea of ridiculing everything that loss of seriousness give that up be bold and have this shraddha and everything else is bound to follow the idea of faith in ourselves is of greatest help to us if faith in ourselves had been more extensively taught and practiced i'm sure of a large portions of the evil and miseries had vanished throughout the history of mankind if any motive power has been more potent than another in the lives of all great men and women it is that of faith in themselves born with the consciousness that they were to be great they became great let a man go down as low as possible there must come a time when out of sheer desperation he will take an upward curve and will learn to have faith in himself but it is better for us that we should know it from the very first why should we have all these bitter experiences in order to gain faith in ourselves we should see that all the difference between man and man is owing to the existence or non existence of faith in himself faith in ourselves will do everything i have experienced in it in my own life and i'm still doing so as i grow older that faith is becoming stronger and stronger he is an atheist who does not believe in himself the old religion says that he was an atheist who did not believe in god the new religion says that he is an atheist who does not believe in himself but it is not self is faith because the vedanta again is the doctrine of oneself it means faith in all because you are all love for yourself means love for all love for animals love for everything for all you are all one it is the great faith which will make the world better i am sure for that he is the greatest man who can say with truth i know all about myself do you know how much energy how much powers how much forces are still lurking behind that frame of yours what scientist has known all that is in man millions of years have passed since man first came here and yet at one infinite simul part of his powers have been manifested therefore you must not say that you are weak how do you know what possibility lie behind that degradation on the surface you know but little of that which is within you for behind you is the ocean of infinite power and blessedness faith 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 in yourself faith 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 in god this is the secret of greatness if you have faith in all the 313 million of your mythological gods 
and in all the gods which foreigners have now and again introduced your mist and still no faith in yourself this is no salvation for you have faith in yourself and stand up on that faith and be strong that is what we need why is it that we 330 million of people have been ruled for the last 1000 years by any and every handful of foreigners who choose to walk over our prostrate bodies because they had faith in themselves and we had not an english boy will tell you i am an english man and i can do anything an american boy will tell you the same thing so will an european boy can our boys say the same thing here no not even the boys fathers we have lost faith in ourselves therefore to preach the advaita aspects of vedanta is necessary to arouse up the heart of men to show them the glory of their souls have faith in men whether he appears to you to be a very learned one or the most ignorant one have faith in man whether he appears to be an angel or the very devil himself have faith in man first and then having faith in man believe that if there are defects in him if he makes mistakes if he embraces the crudest and the wildest doctrines believe that it is not from his real nature that they come but from the want of higher ideals you give him the truth and there your work is done let him compare in his own mind with what he has already in him and mark my word if you have really given him the truth the false must vanish light must dispel darkness and truth will bring good out put the good before him see how eagerly they take it see how the divine that never dies that is always living in the human comes up awakened stretches out in hands for all that is good all that is glorious hope you like this audio book and words of swami vivekanand has stirred you in a strength so do give a thumbs up if you are new to my channel hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon for regular updates if you have any request for audio book do comment below till then stay motivated